In this video, we're going to talk about independent and dependent events. Uh, the examples and activities that we do in this come from our uh, red core IB textbook for analysis and um, approaches. So independent events, they are when one event, when one event or outcome does not impact, impact the outcome, does not impact the outcome of another event. Outcome of another event. So uh, it has no bearing, it has no change to the outcome of another event. That's an independent event. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video for a second and I would like you to draw a two-dimensional grid uh, for each of these. Uh, for for the first example and the second example. Consider this the event here, event A and event B. And in the second example, again, this would be event A and this would be event B. And I want you to uh, fill in the table of what the of what the probability of just event A is, what the probability of just event B, and then the intersection of those two events. And same thing down here. And then in a moment, we're gonna make an observation about the relationship between these. So take a moment and pause the video and do that. So here what I did for both of these is I've, I've got the uh, two dimension grid filled in. And uh, let's see, the probability of event A happening. The probability of event A is just this right here, flipping the coin. So we're gonna have a one out of two chance for each of these. So we've got one out of two, one out of two. I'm gonna stagger these a little bit so that way they fit on the, the space there. And then the probability of event B, that is rolling the die. So we've got six different possibilities. So we're gonna be looking at what happens between those six possibilities. So the first one, rolling a four. Well, there's only one opportunity where there's a four out of these six, so that will be one sixth. An odd number, an odd number is one, three, five. So of course that's going to be three out of six. And I'm keeping it as it's natural, um, the, the fraction I'm not simplifying just to, so we can see if we can see a pattern as we're observing here. A number greater than one. Okay, so it doesn't say greater than or equal to, just greater than one. So that's gonna be all of these. So we've got five different possibilities there. So that would be five out of six. And then lastly, uh, the number less than three. Uh, number less than three. So that's gonna be one and two. Again, not less than or equal to three, just less than three. So two out of six. Then when we start looking at the intersection of these two things, the intersection of these two things, we're looking within the grid. Where are both of these things happening? So if we're looking at a head and a four, a head and a four, whoop, not there, a head and a four happen right here. So that's one time out of all 12 possibilities. And if you count up right here, we've got six possibilities and six more, so we've got our 12 possibilities. Then uh, if we're looking at our odd number, or sorry, we're, yeah, head and odd number, head and odd number is right here, here, and here. So that's gonna be three out of our total 12 possibilities. And let's see, let's get rid of this. Boop, boop, boop. Um, a number greater than one. So uh, the tail, and a number greater than one. So again, the intersection of these two things, which is gonna be a tail and a number greater than one. So we've got five possibilities there out of the 12. And finally, a number less than three and a tail. So it's gonna be these two. So we're left with two out of 12. And you may have already started recognizing some patterns as you look across these. And here, let's maybe highlight them so we can see. Here, we'll go like this. We'll go like this. We'll highlight them here and here so that way they kind of jump out at us a little bit more. And then we've got these here and these here. You might see a pattern starting to emerge, um, but let's look at the other one as well. 
So we have uh, events from the green from box X. So we can see we've got two of the four possibilities are in box X. So we've got two out of four. Two out of four and two out of four. And that means, of course, that our blue is also two out of four, right? So we've got two out of four for the... Oops, I put those in the wrong spot. This one is here, so... Uh-oh. Let's move that back. Oh, well, I guess it's all two out of four, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, so each one of these is two out of four. Okay. And then the probability for event B... B is red from box Y. So we've got three reds here and one white. So we're gonna have for red, it's gonna be three out of four and white will be one out of four. So three out of four and white is one out of four. And then red again is three out of four and one out of four. So now when we start looking at the intersection of these things, um, let's pull this up again. Uh, let's see, so we've got green from box X and red from box Y. Green and red, there are six possibilities out of, what's that, four and four, so 16 total. So we've got six out of 16. And um, what's our next one? Our next one is green from box X and white from box Y. Green from box X, from white from box Y. Okay, so we've got 2 out of 16. We have, let's see, blue from box X, red from box Y. Here's our 6 again, uh, 6 out of 16. And finally, white, blue from box X and white from box Y. So we've got our 2 again, so 2 out of 16. So you may have already noticed that we have a little bit of pattern as we look across each of these things. Probably, you know, being an astute, the astute student that you are, recognized it from the first example even. And that relationship, uh, that pattern that we are seeing is that this is a product of these two things. Every one of these, the intersection is a product of the two individual probabilities. So my question was, I actually didn't show it yet, but my question was, looking at all the examples, what's the relationship between these? And that is that P of A and B is equal to probability of A, the probability, yeah, probability of event A times the probability of event B. And remember, this is the intersection and the intersection is where uh, both things are happening at the same time. And this is the definition of the definition of independent events. And it's the definition of independent events because um, we can probably argue why something might be independent but it's not mathematically independent unless it suits this definition, unless it suits this calculation, that the probabilities of these two things, when you put them together, uh, that they become the product, or that the product is the same thing as the intersection. And you might even call this the formal definition of that, uh, because that says, um, you know, that, that it, indeed that these things are defined as independent. All right, so let's look at a couple examples um, as we go through this and see what we can come up with. So uh, Carl is got his motorbike and his car starting only part of the time. So we want to draw a tree diagram. Um, so I'm going to draw a tree diagram. We'll call this his car. And then we'll have another one for his motorbike. And actually, I'm now that I do this, I'm going to move this down a little bit and give myself a little bit more space here. So we're looking at uh, whether his car will start or not, and uh, or whether his car and motorcycle will, will start. So we'll just label these, each of these branches. That's going to be start, 
this is not start and we'll use our complement notation so here's start here is not start remember the complement means almost almost like the opposite of the other thing right but uh, whatever it is is it adds up to 100 percent and we can say if it starts you either it's either going to start or it's not going to start so we can use that complement idea so his car starts 80 percent of the time which means it does not start 20 percent and his motorbike starts 60 percent of the time but not 40 percent and it says that these things are indeed independent and you could probably even argue that these two things are independent of each other because they are two completely different devices. Um, now notice as we do the tree diagram, let's just do a quick refresher. Notice that these two things both add up to 100%. These add up to 100%. These add up to 100%. Each set of branches need to add up to 100%. Um, and then as you go down each branch, all of this will also add up to 100%. Okay, so um, we're looking at what's the probability that both will start. So both starting would be going down these two branches. So that's gonna be uh, 0 0.8 times 0 0.6, which is 0 0.48. So the probability that both start uh, let's say actually both start is going to equal 0 0.48. Awesome. And then it says uh, we want to find out what the probability that Carl, Carl can only use his car. Well, that would mean his car starts on both of these opportunities. So it would be here and then it would also be right there. So we would want to look at both of those. So there's 0 0.8 times 0 0.4 which is 0 0.32 and so that is the let's see so the probability that only car well only car is equal to only car is equal to uh, the probability that both start or the probability that car starts and motorbike does not start so, um, and I'm just using some shorthand there because we're saying that these two things that this, 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 or this could happen. And in the last uh, class, the last video, we had looked at um, or is the addition rule. So that means we have to add those two probabilities together. So here we've got the probability of both happening, which is 0 0.48, and the probability of the car starting, but not the motorbike starting is 0 0.32. And when we add those two things together, we get 0 0.8. Now, you would you could probably argue, well, hey, isn't isn't it the fact that I'm looking at only his car car starting? Wouldn't I just look at this? You know, there are gonna be instances where uh, yes, that could work, but I would encourage you to continue to look down the branches and go through this formal definition or this formal process. Of checking all these different parts because what could happen is in the future you might look down this branch here and then then down this branch here and it's not going to necessarily be the exact same thing that if you looked at I'm sorry if you looked at this branch here and this branch here it may not come out to be exactly 0 0.6 because those two things match and because we're going down this branch hey these two things match so it's 0 0.8 I don't want you to jump to those conclusions because those conclusions are not necessarily correct. So I would always encourage you to go through this whole process that we're going through over here to make sure that you're truly calculating uh, the all the different instances of when this could happen. So, you know, not a lot of shortcuts. I would not do a lot of shortcuts. Okay, next example. Um, suppose that we're spinning a spinner. Um, and we're going to look at the outcomes of these things. So uh, I want to also talk about tree diagrams again. So what if you notice, I've already got set up here three branches for the three different colors, black, red, and yellow. Now, if this were a different color, let's say this were blue, or let's say it's purple even, we would have another branch that comes out here, 
and we would have another branch here for each of these things because each spinner is going to be completely independent of the other spin, and that would go off for this branch. So even because we've got four spaces, we would end up having four, eight, 12, 16 different possible scenarios. We are going to look at, uh, since we're looking at black, we don't care if we get this black or this black, we don't care. So we're gonna combine these just to make our life a little simpler. But it doesn't mean that we still don't have possibly 16 different scenarios. They're gonna be, because the black uh, scenarios are going to be combined with each other. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna label these black, yellow, red. We've got black, yellow, red, black, yellow, red, black, yellow, red. All right, so those are each of the different branches for spinning the spinner twice. Here's my first spin over here that I already labeled, and here's the second spin that I already labeled. So I've got all of these spins in here. Um, so what are the probabilities of getting each of these spins? Well, the black is gonna be two out of four. The yellow is one out of four, and the red is one out of four. And again, these things are independent. The, the second spin has no bearing and no impact, uh, has, has not been impacted by the first spin. So all of these things are going to remain exactly the same. So, um, so all of the probabilities all the way down uh, are the same. And again, notice, hey, we've got two different scenarios popped into here. So uh, we're simplifying and consolidating our tree diagram, not talking about every single branch. So this branch, this first branch here, would be getting a black and then another black, a black and then a yellow, a black, then a red, and so on. So, right, I'm just going down these different branches, I'm going down black, then red. Now I'm going to go down yellow, then black, yellow, then yellow, yellow, then red. So it's a possibility that the order might matter here. I don't know. So that's why I'm looking at all of these different possibilities in this way red and then black, red and then yellow, red and then red. And I could even go so far as to calculate each one of these. You know, you don't always have to. We'll look at a scenario in, the, in a little bit where you may not have to calculate all of them. But let's do it just for kicks. Let's do it just to practice. This is going to be 2 fourths times 2 fourths, which is 4 sixteenths. 2 fourths times 1 fourth, 2 sixteenths. Oops. That's a six. Two fourths times one fourth is two sixteenths. And you notice there's a lot of repetition here. That's okay. That's going to happen when you do tree diagrams, especially if you've got a lot of different possibilities in the tree diagrams. You're going to probably see a lot of repetition, um, especially if they're, you know, like the, there are these theoretical scenarios where. Um, we might have, that's a four, where we've got um, the same thing kind of repeating over and over again. So there we go. Now, as we said, at the, as I said earlier, just in our review, this all needs to add up to four out of four. This needs to add up to four out of four, 100%. Four out of four, four out of four. So that means all of these have to add up to 16. 16 out of 16 has to be 100% of all of our different possibilities. So let's check. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we did this correct. We've got all the different possibilities listed here. And uh, all the different possibilities listed here. All the different probabilities listed here. So this is good. Uh, we're in the right spot here. All right. So let's find that black appears on both spins. Black appears on both spins. So that's going to be looking at just this branch right here. Black appears on both spins. So that's going to be 4 out of 16. What is the probability that, let's get this out of the way, what is the probability that we have different colors up here? Okay, different colors. We've got black and yellow, black and red, yellow, black, yellow, red, red, yellow. Ah, red, black, red, black. Forgot that one. 
So we've got two ways that we could calculate this. Of course, first we could add up each one of these, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 out of 16. So we should get 10 out of 16. Or the other way we could calculate this is we could say, well, you know what? I don't want to add up all of these things. I see three things kind of sticking out here that I'm not going to include. So I could use the idea of the complement. And that would be one minus the probability that the colors are the same. And if we did that, we would have one minus, let's look at those, four, five, six. One minus six out of 16. And course that is going to also be 10 out of 16. So you know depending on how you set up the problem depending on if you went through this whole process it might be easier to do the the ones that are the same versus the ones that are different um, but it's also just as safe to do all the ones that are different you know it's it's neither here nor there you can choose whichever one you want to do but remember that both do work. What's the probability that yellow appears on both spins? Yellow appears on both spins. Okay, so yellow is, whoops, not that one. Yellow appears on both. Ah, that's just going to be this one. Yellow is on both. Okay, so 1 out of 16. And then finally, black appears on either spin. Well, let's see. Let's highlight those again. Black appears on either. Well, here it here appears on both. Here it appears on the first ones and the second ones and the second ones. Okay, so we could do again the complement or we could add these up. We've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So, you know, it's not really going to matter if you do the complement or you don't do the complement if you just do the, the actual events themselves. So, you know, since we've got it all right here, we'll just add up each of these green ones here. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different scenarios where black shows up on either of the spin, on the first spin or the second spin. So I'm taking this one, taking this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. That's why I added up each one of those using that addition rule. Okay, so that's the basic premise of independent events. So let's look at dependent events real fast. Dependent events are very similar to independent events, as you kind of look at the screen here. Um, I'm going to jump ahead and jump back. Dependent events are when one event does affect, does impact the occurrence of other events. So uh, we're going to look at, well, what does that mean? So let's, let's look here. Suppose a hat contains five red and three blue tickets. One ticket's chosen, the color's noted, and then it's put aside. Or another way to say that, it's not put back in the hat. And then a second ticket is chosen. What is the probability that the, that it, being the second ticket, is red? So we need to start by looking at what happens with our first draw. So our first draw, we could have gotten a blue ticket or a red ticket. If we got a blue ticket, it would have been 3 out of 8. There's 3 possible blue tickets out of the 8 total tickets. <clears throat> The red has, you know, is the complement because those are the, that's the other color in there. So it could have been five out of eight. So that's, so let's assume that we could have done either one of these things. So it could have been the blue or, blue first or the red first. So then for our second draw, what happens to our sample? Well, we've already taken uh, one of the tickets out. So if we've gone down this branch, we've already taken one of the blue tickets out. So there's now only two blue tickets left, but there's still five red tickets left. So we're going to have, if we're choosing a red next, that means there's five red tickets, but now there's only seven tickets left in the whole hat or bin or bucket or whatever it's called. If we go down this other way, um, well, here we had chosen a red one first. So that means the red has gone down to four. We haven't touched the blue yet, so there's three of those. But we're not worried about the blue. We are just wor we're worried about how many tickets are in there, but we're worried about getting a red ticket. So there's going to be four red tickets left out of seven tickets in total. So this is the total tickets left, total tickets left, 
in uh, the hat. And then this is the number of blue tickets, or sorry, the number of red tickets remaining, number of red remaining uh, after selecting a blue. And this, here, I'll do a different color here. This is the number of green uh, red tickets remaining after choosing a red first. So, um, so we can see that the, this one here has decreased and for each of these, the total sample has decreased as well. So here we can see that that first draw has actually changed the probability of the second draw. So we've decreased how many tickets we have and in some of these cases, we've actually decreased the tickets there. So what is the actual probability that this could happen? The probability that uh, we get uh, red on second, on second draw, is equal to the probability of blue and then red, or the probability of red and then red. So again, we're gonna add our two probabilities together. The first being three out of eight, uh, times 5 out of 7, the second being 5 out of 8 times 4 out of 7. So we're still doing the same idea that we did before. We're still multiplying these two events together, um, just like we did with independent events. Um, and now here we've got 15 out of 56 plus our 20 out of 56, which is a total of 35 out of 56. So there's our probability of getting red on the second draw. And that takes us then to this definition again. The probability of A and B, if they are in, if they are dependent events, is the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has occurred. So here we're seeing whatever happened with A, whatever happened with our first event, whatever happened with our first event, it might have changed or it has changed something for our second event. So we say that uh, it's the probability of B given that A has occurred because that's going to make some kind of change. Now, some of the key words that you'll see when you do this is with replacement. If you see with replacement, that means the, the events are independent because if they are independent, uh, it, we put the, like, let's say we put the ticket back in the hat. Um, then the the second draw doesn't matter. Uh, it does the first draw didn't matter because if we replaced this ticket back in, this would we would still have eight tickets back in there. So it, there's no change. So it, it's it, this nothing has happened here. So there's you know it's not changing anything. But without replacement, that is our indicator that this is going to be a dependent event. And the dependent event means that that is going to change something. The sec the first event has changed the second event. All right, uh, we've got one or two more examples here. So here we've got uh, a bag of balls, six black, four white, uh, six black, four white. We're drawing three balls and we're gonna determine that one black ball is drawn. So here we go. So I'm gonna do a tree diagram. I, I like two dimensional grids, but you know what? Sometimes they are not as easy because they only take two events. They only allow us to draw two events in there. So if we've got three events happening, drawing the three different balls, then we might have to do this tree diagram. And we'll give a little bit of space there. And we're gonna give a little bit of space here as well. Okay, so let's see. We've got black and then white. Black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. All right, and each one of these things is done without replacement. So now we've got to look about what happens as we do each of these. <clears throat> now we could, you know, I'm, I'm looking at all these different possibilities, but I'm, I'm so as I'm assessing the question, it's really just asking what happens if I draw one black ball. So I know it could be here, it could be here, like there's a cute couple different branches that this could happen. So I don't necessarily have to fill out the entire tree. I can shortcut my way through and only find the ones that where one black ball is drawn. So let's find those scenarios where only one black ball is drawn. So here, 
we've got all three black that this branch is all three black i'm just going to kind of go through every single branch combination here 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 so i'm going to go through each combination and see what do we have so we've got black black white black white black black white 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 black black white black white 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 black white 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 okay so now if i want to kind of shortcut my way through this i can say all right i want to know the probability that one black ball is drawn not at least one black ball just one black ball so that means i'm going to be looking at this branch this branch and this branch those three <clears throat> okay so let's let's find the probabilities of each of those so we start with six black and four white so that's going to be six out of ten and four out of ten so as i'm going down each of these branches i need to make that adjustment so here is six out of ten now i need to go here so now i've got nine balls left and i haven't touched the white ones yet so here I've got four white balls still in there. And that would mean this would be five out of nine if I wanted to put that in there just to make sure I'm being safe. And then I want to go down this branch here. Okay, so now I've taken one black ball and I've taken one white ball. So there's eight now remaining in there. And I'm looking at uh, a, drawing a white ball. So here I've taken one white ball out. So that means I'm going to have three left there and five left up here. Okay, so this is gonna be six out of 10 times four out of nine times three out of eight. All right, let's take another branch. So let's see, we've gotta go white, and then we're gonna go black, and then we're gonna go white. All right, so let's look at this black branch. So here, we haven't touched any black ones yet. So there are still six black balls, and we've taken one of the white ones out so we know that there's nine left, and which means that down here, we've got three out of nine, which follows if we've taken one of the white ones out, down here we'd have one less white one. Okay, good. We'll need that for the next, the next, uh, the next example, or the next part of the problem. So now we're going down here. So here we've taken, no, we're not going there. We're going here. So now we've taken out one white and one black. So we've got eight balls left and we've got three white ones left because again, we have taken one white one out and one black one. So each of those is one left, one left. Okay, great. So the probability of this branch here is four out of All right, and if we want to keep it consistent, we'll just make that the blue there. Beep. There we go. And our last one, what color are we going to do here? Let's do a nice pink, a pinkish red here. So we'll make this one, whoops, we'll make this one our pinkish red color. And to go here, we're going to have to go down this branch, and then this branch, and then this branch. Okay, so... We've taken out a white, we've taken out another white, and we still have six black balls in there. So six out of eight, and we've only got two white balls remaining. Okay, so this is now going to be uh, four out of ten times three out of nine times six out of eight. And if you notice, hey, look at that. Six, four, three, four, six, three, four, three, six. That's all the same the same number. So if we calculate one of these, Two out of 720. Now, typically, uh, when we're trying to find this kind of answer, I say, you know, hey, don't don't simplify your fractions. Keep all your fractions the same. In this case, I'm not going to because I've only got one thing that I'm looking at. I'm not looking at a bunch of different uh, examples like we had here, where I might need a bunch of different combinations and I might even need to compare these things. So since I'm just looking at this one here. 
I'm going to simplify. I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. I can see that this is going to become one-tenth really easily. And that's going to make my final computation of the probability of one black uh, ball drawn. That's going to make it really easy. It's going to be one-tenth or one-tenth or one-tenth. So if I add those three things together, I get my three-tenths. All right, we got one last question. I'm not gonna work through the whole question because I think this video is getting kind of lengthy and I think you probably have an idea of what's going on, but I wanna set it up because um, you know I think it's always nice to, um, well, you know what, it's a video. It doesn't matter. You can stop it if you wanna stop it after I set it up. I'm gonna go through the whole example. It's kind of long, I get that, but you know what, do what you will with it. Okay, uh, so we got two boxes containing uh, flowers we've got some purple flowers and some white flowers in each of the boxes and we're going to choose a box by flipping a coin and then we're going to remove one flower from each box or from or one flower from that box we want to know what's the probability that we choose box a and white and then we have purple so let's set this up um so it would be nice because we've got two things happening here. <clears throat> uh, if we chose, if we could do a two-way table or a, a two-dimensional grid, but again, because of how this is set up, we still have to stick with a tree diagram <clears throat> because the first thing we're doing is we're flipping a coin. So we've got to do our coin flip first, where we've got that, and we could get our heads, or we could get a uh, sorry, not heads. We're gonna the by flipping the coin, we're gonna choose either box A or we're gonna choose box B. And then from there, we're gonna randomly choose a flower. So we flip the coin to choose a box and then we're gonna randomly pick a flower. So there's some randomization happening with the coin and some randomization happening with the flower. Then we've got purple flowers and we've got white flowers and both boxes. So I can say this is purple down here and white here as well. Okay, so uh, choosing box A or box B, well, that's a flip of a coin, so that's gonna be one half for each. Purple flowers for the first box, box A contains two purple flowers, four white flowers. So two out of six, four out of six. And then uh, box B contains five plants with purple, one plant with white. So we've still got six plants in there. So five with purple, one with white. So now we can find, uh, so we can see each of these. This is box A selecting purple, box A selecting white, box B purple, box B white. What's the probability that we chose box A and it has white flowers? Okay, so probability... Uh, a and white. Okay, so that's that's the branches that we're looking at down. So we're looking box A and white flowers. One half to choose box A times purple flowers, four out of six. So we have four out of 12. There's our probability for selecting a white flower from box A. And then the second one says, has purple flowers. So the probability of purple is equal to the probability of A and purple, or the probability of B and purple. So we'd have to look down each of these branches, go down box A and purple, box B and purple. So box A and purple is one half to six, one half times two six, or, which means we add box B in purple, one half and five six. And so we have two out of 12 plus five out of 12. And that is seven out of 12. So there is our probability for that. Now, one last thing that I'm gonna caution you on before we say uh, goodbye is that um, even though there are, if you look and you notice, hey, here's two purple flowers, here's five purple flowers, that's seven out of 12. 
Um, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to go through this whole process as opposed to j jumbling all these things together. Because if we rolled a die and we were saying, hey, what if we had uh, one and two we're going to choose from box A and three, four, five, six we're going to go from box B, we might have a different number here. It's not going to come out to equally like just dumping all the purple plants in together um, because we're going to be more likely to choose something from one side or another. So this ends up being the sum of the total number of purple flowers because this is equal. So I would again encourage you to still go down each of the branches and go through this whole process uh, to solve this as opposed to trying to find a shortcut with that. All right, that's it. I hope that this was helpful in recognizing the difference between independent and dependent events, um, how similar they are and how different they are. Um, and if you notice, it might not be, uh, you, you, let me just pause while I'm saying goodbye here, that this is actually impacted. It is considered a dependent event because us choosing the flowers is based on something that happened here. This has caused us, this flipping the coin has caused us to go either here or here. Again, it doesn't have a huge impact because this is equal, but these are dependent events because which choice I have is dependent on what I've done here. So again, hopefully you can see the similarities and differences with independent and dependent events. Um, and I will talk to you soon.